I am dusting off my color burst powders and we are going to try a few different techniques with them. I haven't used these probably in years, but I absolutely love them and I was going back through some of my old videos and one that is my absolute favorite is an art journal page that I did. Uh, the colors are just amazing, the texture and everything, and it inspired me to break these out and use them uh, just to kind of have a little bit of creative play today. I don't know if these color burst powders are still available. I don't think that they are, but there are some others like infusions. There's also the uh, magicals from Lindy's. If, if you want something, they also have like these shakers that are available from Lindy's. So there are a lot of different options for uh, powder pigments if you want something like this. All right, I am going to be working on the back side of some watercolor paper because I am going to throw a lot of water at this. So I wanna make sure that it is going to hold up to all of the stuff that I'm gonna throw at it. All right, so I'm gonna take this stencil and place it semi-straight and I'm actually going to be taking some water and spraying it through the stencil. And then that way when I put the powders down, it's only going to react where I put the water. It'll make more sense in just a second. This water bottle is actually uh, probably my favorite right now for overall use. I still really love my Distress Sprayer, but this one for this type of thing, it's great. It's a continuous water bottle. I'll have it linked down below. Um, it's from Amazon. All right, so I'm going to carefully put the Color Burst powders down and I'm going to use a few of my favorite colors. These are a little dangerous. Okay, because you really have to be careful. A little bit goes a long way and you can make quite a mess if you're not careful. So we're just gonna sprinkle on just a little bit. All right, and you can see how that powder just bursts. That's why they have their, their name. I'm pretty sure they <laughs> say the color burst powders. All right, we're also gonna use some burnt orange. Just like that. And then maybe a little bit of this Prussian blue, I believe, Prussian blue. I'm trying to be very, very careful here because again, a little bit goes a long way. So now I'm gonna take the water again and then just spray that and you can see how it just kind of bursts out. So beautiful. All right, I'm gonna pick this up very carefully because I wanna keep that leaf shape so I'm just gonna pick this up very carefully. And there we go. Just like that. Isn't that so cool? I probably put too much powder on if I'm being completely honest, but that's okay. We're gonna spray just a little bit of water cause I don't like it. There we go. A little bit over this way. Just to get a little wicking going on. Perfect. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm gonna dry this and then we'll move on to something else. All right, I'm gonna dry this on one of my new favorite things and these are uh, baking cooling racks that I'm actually using to dry my backgrounds that I use a ton of like sprays and water on because this allows the heat to go um, you know, like circulate through the paper instead of me having to hold it, which isn't that big of a deal, but sometimes I want to add water and, you know, I want, I want a hand free so that I can add more, you know, sprays or whatever I want to do. So I really like these and these are on Amazon. <laughs> so I'm just going to dry this. I definitely use too much powder, but that's okay. It's been quite a long time since I've used these. Um, but I do know that a little bit goes a long way. I just forgot how much <laughs> a little bit is. All right, we're gonna try that again, I think. So, all right, I'm gonna try it with some numbers. I'm gonna hold my stencil down with the magnets. Okay, and then I'm just gonna spray just a little bit of water there and then sprinkle on probably like that. So I'm using a lot less because when I spray more water on, it will definitely burst out like it, you know, the name says. 
I'm starting to use too much again. It's because when you see it, you're like, oh, that's, you know, not a lot, but then forget how much they burst out and how much color is in these pigments, these little pigment powders. Now, let's see if I want to add water just like that. All right, let's see. Ooh, that's really cool. And I'm actually gonna take this because there's a ton of pigment on there. Um, and I'm gonna spray just a little bit more water probably. And then we will take another piece of watercolor paper and then we will stamp it onto there. Just like this. Plop. All right. Oh wow, that is so cool. You know what, and I could probably even get one more out of this to be completely honest. Let's do a little bit of this on this one. So I'm not gonna completely cover it, but we're just gonna stamp on in some areas to get some more texture and stuff on here. Oh, there we go. That's actually really cool. Okay, perfect. Look at how cool that is. If you are a neat crafter, these powders are not for you. <laughs> Just putting that out there, I'm sure you could already tell. Although they probably could inspire you to get something out, maybe your inks or something and create something. All right, isn't that one cool? I'm gonna add just a tad bit more water to maybe in some little areas to get some of that wicking. There we go. There we go, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside. I didn't get this one super wet like I did the other one, the leaf one. So I'm just going to set these aside to dry and I wanna see if I can um, get some resist going on with the powders. I'm going to actually use some uh, Distress Paint to stamp with and see what happens. All right, I know this technique works with sprays, so I wanted to see if it would work with the Color Burst powders just to see. Okay, so we're just gonna get a little paint on here and this little brayer. I don't use this one very often. I have some bigger ones that I use um, for most things. So I'm gonna take it and I'm going to brayer it onto my stamp here. I wanna make sure that I get full coverage, okay? You can also stamp it into um, the, the paint as well, but make sure I get on camera. I'm gonna stamp that out right there. You can do this typically with acrylic paint as well. Doesn't have to be distress paint. All right, and I'm gonna take some more here and I'm gonna go up this side here, just like that. And then maybe a little bit down at the bottom. Well, oh, off camera. I have a horrible habit of doing that. All right, I'm gonna take my favorite script stamp and just kind of brayer on haphazardly. I don't really want it to be perfect. Um, and then we're just gonna get some of that on here. Just like that, okay? I don't know if that's gonna show up at all. Um, hopefully it resists. So we're gonna dry this and then we will add some of the color burst powders. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna lay some color down first and I think I'm gonna use, I don't know. Those, those colors are my favorite, so I'm just gonna stick with them. I have the turquoise. Okay, just a little bit here and there. And then the burnt orange. And I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. And then I'm gonna spray from far away. Just because if you spray too close, then it's going to, the powder's just gonna go everywhere. And I don't think it is resisting like I had thought. So that's pretty interesting. Let's see when it starts drying. Because the same thing kind of happens when you use the crayons as a resist. You don't notice it. Oh yeah, see, it's starting to show up now. So the same thing actually happens with the crayons is that you don't notice a resist until you start drying it, which is kind of interesting. 
can see that that resisted a little bit. Didn't do that stamp on that side, this one here, which I'm surprised. Let's see if I maybe get some more color on there. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's actually starting to show up. You could see right there. I think I want a little more of that burnt orange. It's such a pretty color. And then maybe a little bit more of this turquoise in a couple different areas. And then we will add the water. Very carefully adding it, because if I spray too, too much or too, if it splurges out too much, it's going to go everywhere. And that's not what I want. All right. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to tilt it back and forth a little bit and then I'm gonna move that color around with my finger and then we will dry. All right, so the more color you add, obviously the darker it is going to be and then uh, the resist will show up a little bit more. So it's starting to show up a little bit more in these areas that I added more color to. So that's pretty cool. I love this one. This is such a cool background because now you can even stamp something on top of this or emboss it. Like there's so much that you can do with something like this. So pretty cool. And I'm gonna take some of that color that's on my desk here and then just use it to splatter on some of these just to give it a little more movement and texture. Just like that. I try not to waste, you know. There we go. There we go, just like that. I think I want some of this burnt orange on this one. It's a little too too much turquoise. I'm just gonna lay some of that down right there and then carefully add some water to it, just like that, there we go. You know what, this actually creates some really cool splats instead of just little splatters. Like if you get a bunch of it on there, here, I'll show you. All right, so you get a bunch of that color on there and it soaks up into those bristles and then you can go. Look at those cool splats. Super fun. Wow, I love this. Add more to this side right here. All right, I'm gonna add some darker turquoise splats. So, look at that. I've never been able to get something like that consistent with a paintbrush. This is like a stencil brush. So you can find these brushes on Amazon as well. So just want little splats. It doesn't do as good uh, with little splatters. I mean, you can get some, but it, it does really great with those bigger splats. All right, I'm gonna get some more on there. There we go. Look at how cool. All right, on this one, this one's my favorite one. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to there just to get those splats wicking a little bit more. They look almost a little too perfect. And then I'm gonna take some water in my hand and then just dribble it on there. These don't react the same as distress sprays, but I still wanna try to get some movement and stuff um, on this background. I'm gonna see if I can splatter some of this distress paint onto these backgrounds. I'm pretty sure that it's going to react with the color burst powder underneath. So I might need to do to use something else, but I wanted to do it on my least favorite one. <laughs> just to check first to see if it would ruin it or anything. Um, yeah, it reacts a little bit, but not as much as I thought. So I'm gonna take this one, which is my favorite one and I'm going to take some of that paint 
and then just do some splatters of white. I have this cap here that's full of uh, the paint. So I'm just gonna dig that out and then I'm gonna water it down and see if I can get more of like a splat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get what I want here, but we'll see. We'll do it in this upper corner here. Yeah, it's not watered down enough, but I don't wanna water it too, down too much because then it's not going to be as opaque. So, yeah, let's see. There we go. Not as good of splats as the, the other ones with the color, but. Wow, isn't that so pretty? And I was just playing around. All right, so if you take anything away from this video, it's just to sit down and play with your supplies. I had no idea the outcome. I wanted to try this resist technique uh, with the color burst powders and the distress paint. I didn't know if it would work and it semi works. Uh, you obviously would get a better uh, result if you used embossing powder, but I didn't want to do all that. I have to pull out a different heat gun and things like that. I didn't have a lot of time either. So we just got back from a week in San Diego and I needed some creative play time after being away for a week, not doing any work. It was actually really nice, but I needed just to sit and play for a little bit and this definitely satisfied me. Um, I love how this turned out. So if you pull something out in your stash that you haven't played with in a long time, or maybe you haven't played with it at all and it's just been sitting there, and this video inspired you to do so, I would love to see it. So tag me on social media. If you're new here, I would love to have you join the community. So hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it in any way valuable. Maybe you just wanted it to be playing in the background, whatever the case may be. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you all have a great day. Stay creative, my friends.